the requirement also. Thank you. Thank you, Bushpendra. Uh, these days, we are, have started using drone a lot for the maintenance part of the module. Re regular maintenance, you can say, quarterly or half really for the generation of the module. Ajay, sir, I have a question for you. Uh, how do you think, uh, will it be helpful for the rooftop, smaller rooftop, or the larger, or the larger one? Or will it be viable for the smaller one also? Uh, so you are asking about the drone, uh, like survey or drone uh, yeah, Drone survey, because uh, yeah. I, uh, these days they are using IR cameras also to check out the EL images and all. Yeah. The module. yeah, thermal imaging and all this. Actually, yeah. I haven't encountered with these kind of uh, uh, this ONDM practices, <clears throat> but I would like to give uh, uh, some thought on this uh, ONDM part, especially for the like module cleaning part, which is the probably major major um, uh, area of not concern like uh, uh, scope of uh, work. Major scope of work is like module cleaning. So because uh, one of our colleague, uh, he's also sitting here. So I have done a few um, uh, analysis uh, for my clients, uh, robotic versus uh, your wet cleaning or wet cleaning versus dry cleaning. So that is very, very important uh, uh, as per the like demography. You, you have to do actually what uh, would be the um, uh, cost uh, coming in, in terms of robotic, what would be the cost coming in terms of water, whether water is available or not, or quality of water is available or not, you have to like take uh, through um, uh, this uh, uh, trucks and all this. So these all things uh, we have to consider, uh, especially for Rajasthan, because we are sitting in Rajasthan. Rajasthan, uh, your water is scarce. Maharashtra water is available um, uh, in abundance. So there actually we recommend uh, you just go for the like water cleaning. Uh, and in Rajasthan it's like very very difficult to get this so robotic cleaning would be better. Next point in this like soiling losses. Soiling losses how much uh, you just wanted to reduce uh, with the robotic whether it's like you are getting uh, uh, optimized one say 0.5% or 0.25% of soiling losses uh, whereas uh, uh, in, in case of Rajasthan, probably uh, dust storms are there, so you might be having soiling losses 2%, 2.5% or 3%. So there actually it makes a value to it to go for uh, this uh, uh, like robot cleaning versus uh, wet cleaning. So these are, uh, and one more thing actually, you just asked about the software part because I am running one consulting firm and I am directly involved and deep diving all this stuff. It's very, very, very important. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you actually. Um, like there are some softwares are available when you go to the ground then you have to do the ground survey then uh, after that you have to make the plant layout and array layout then PV CAD software you have to use from US or then PV cyst, helioscope, all this energy simulations you have to do it. Uh, your design engineering team will do say PV cyst analysis. Your CEO, the responsible person should ask what are the inputs you have taken because it's a software what you have put into. And after that, uh, he'll, he'll confirm actually with best of his knowledge. Now you have to award to the EPC. So EPC also you have to make a line with these all inputs, whether he'll be uh, giving this much of performance, this much of quality uh, to get all these inputs. Uh, input is again like soiling loss, I, I said, your mismatching loss. So he has to maintain it and he has to then guarantee it. So that, that collaboration is very, very important with your design team, your like your uh, authority, decision makers, and the EPC partner. And uh, uh, in my experience, whatever we have done with our clients, for our clients, whatever number we committed in PV cyst analysis, the energy yield, we always got better than that. Great. So I feel this uh, uh, drones are uh, less popular or less useful in terms of the uh, rooftop solar because uh, I have got a small roof, we have two mega two kilowatt. The other one has three kilowatts. So I, we, I cannot coordinate, or some EPC even also cannot coordinate, or ONM conductor uh, cannot coordinate me and the, and then uh, have a common drone. Because whenever you use a drone, at least it, it will charge ten thousand for minimum, for just for a condition or anything. So it is useful uh, only in case of the ground mounted, where is a uh, twenty-five megawatt, fifty megawatt, hundred megawatt, or something like that. So we use drones. Use drones for the uh, having the uh, temperature, this thing, hot spots, uh, uh, condition monitoring of the module, 
condition monitoring even for the AC equipment where it is getting hot spot and uh, uh, like this. And then uh, don't also now uh, we are planning to use one of our plant as the security measures. Now we are removing slowly, slowly remove, uh, security uh, the manpower from the plant and uh, drones are de being deployed to just uh, uh, get uh, security surveillance in the uh, daytime as well as, as uh, night vision cameras fitted with the drone. So now we are replacing even the uh, night watchmen and night security staff with that type of uh, drones. So drones you can use uh, for uh, condition monitoring. Drones you are you can use for the security monitoring unit and security. Uh, now what you know you, the drones are coming with the in artificial intelligence, so you can just connect with the computer with your drone and then you find out uh, who came and when at what time. So you you need not to uh, give you a single security uh, for your whole plant. Maybe it is 50 megawatt, 100 megawatt, whatever it may be. Just connect with them and then you, uh, you can see next morning oh, who was who uh, came ever in my plant or whatever any uh, undesired elements or undesired activities have been carried out even for the staff, even for the anybody else, even for the outsider in uh, miscreants. So that type of technology are being uh, developed in uh, nowadays and uh, these are, we are uh, going to use in future very uh, very soon. And uh, coming to the, the uh, cleaning, module cleaning uh, you were talking about. Uh, now we are using, uh, we have got three types of technology, wet cleaning, dry cleaning and dry cleaning, uh, the robots. So uh, we started using robot in place of uh, dry, uh, this sort, uh, wet cleaning. Robots are, uh, as you said, key, it depends upon the water availability and even what is available. It is what is very uh, scarce resource, you cannot waste just for the model cleaning. So now the, uh, this thought process is coming to replace the water completely from the, uh, at least for the wasting. Uh, for just for the cleaning of the modules. But uh, again, there is a, one challenge is come when there is a uh, soil, soil is sticky and it comes, uh, sits on the module and it cannot be uh, washed out, or, sorry, it cannot be uh, cleaned out from the dry cleaning. Then you have to go uh, for a wet cleaning once in a while. Say, suppose you completed 10 uh, cycles of dry cleaning, you have to go for a one, uh, for a, uh, for a uh, wet cleaning. Depends upon the soil quality again. If I'm, I, I may have, uh, I have my plant in the Registan, Jaisalmer, Bikaner, uh, definitely uh, there's a dry soil, so you can be wiped out from the uh, dry cleaning. So, depending upon the location, geographic conditions, soil conditions, it may be a combination of both, maybe pure dry cleaning, maybe pure wet cleaning, maybe a combination of both. So, that type of things are now coming and uh, depends very much the important uh, thing here. Absolutely right. I have a question for uh, Ar Arwaji, after you. Uh, since you are working in the CNI segment also, so what challenge you face before installation and after installation, especially in the CNI segment? See, uh, normally a good site survey, a good design um, eliminates use of, means a lot of uh, um, efforts in the initial designing phase, site survey phase, reduces um, बहुत कम टाइम लगता है इंस्टॉलेशन में एंड एक्यूरेसी ऑफ इंस्टॉलेशन इज वेरी क्लोज टू द डिजाइन व्हिच वी हैव डन सो दैट पार्ट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो व्हेनेवर वी हैव टू डू अ साइट वी हैव टू फर्स्ट डू अ साइट सर्वे थोरली ऑल द इनपुट्स फ्रॉम द क्लाइंट इज आल्सो नीड्स टू बी टेकन बिकॉज़ सम टाइम व्हाट हैपेंस यू हैव अ रूफ देयर टिन शेड रूफ क्लाइंट हैव अ प्लान आफ्टर 6 मंथ्स ही विल पुट अ फर्नेस बिलो दैट रूफ and if you will not involve in uh, him in that design he will put after 6 month a, uh, a heating furnace there that furnace will uh, heat up the roof and your efficiency of module will go down so that all uh, parameters needs to be considered while we design a, any project so jitna closely hum jitna thoroughly design ko karenge utna hi hamar ko challenges kam aayenge but even then if some challenges comes like uh, but client changes his mind or something happens. So on the um, site itself, we have to take a decision ki isko yahan par, uh, we will face a problem. So we have to shift or reduce the capacity. But quality or performance we have to maintain. So that is the point we have to consider. Himaji, I have a question for you. Since you are working for the robotics part, for the maintenance and even for the installation before the uh, before the installation of the project also. So what major challenges you face while persuading to go for the robotics for the multi megawatt kind of plant and all? Irrespective of the, for the timing, if I forget about the economics of the same, what are the major challenges which you face? 
Uh, so, sir, I think uh, we heard from the Jains uh, because they are they have already installed and used it. And even sir said because they have consulted into their customers. So, robotics has been used since last four to five years, not new as of now. And there are three concerns from the customer side. The first one is the cost because they can't exceed the cost of the OM. And cleaning has been the 30 to 40 percent of the OM as of now. And second thing is that uh, after the cost efficiency that, that we need to maintain anyhow, we can't lose that even. And third thing in the cleaning is that the availability of water. And uh, after availability, the uh, quality of the water available over there. That, that is also matter a lot. So these three concerns are that, that that's, uh, that's the reason people are going for the roboting and dry cleaning. And uh, like, like you asked about the challenges from our side, what we face, uh, so I think Sir has already addressed uh, in his remark. The uh, geography and the climatic conditions vary in each and every state in India. And uh, that also varies the dust conditions. Suppose we are in Rajasthan there, we are having dry kind of sands that is not sticky to the panels. And once we go to the coastal areas like in the southern part and in the Gujarat even in sub areas, so where we are having some humidity, some sticky soils and all. So we need to be very aware about that, which kind of cleaning mechanism we are putting based on the geography. And uh, that's the specialty about our company. Uh, we are a very small startup and very new startup uh, in India, uh, and we have developed a lot of product in India. We have got the patents and all. So our main uh, working was in that side only. How we can provide geography and climatic conditions specific cleaning mechanism, not like that. We are developing and providing one cleaning mechanism and uh, putting that everywhere. So that is the challenge: geography and dust condition, uh, climatic condition specificity. Second challenge we are facing that there are certain uh, plants which are having uh, very extreme climatic condition like uh, we are having one in Gujarat and that is uh, near to the border and they are having some salt content in the humidity. So they, uh, due to that, even the plants component like inverters and other electronic components, they are also getting damaged. So we need to be very aware about that even. We need to read the conditions and we need to design and uh, provide the protections in our electronics and mechanical systems uh, in that way. So these are the two concerns which uh, and challenges we are facing and we are solving and that's how we are creating value for customers. Since these are the robotics part, what are the chances to, suppose there, there is a problem in the site, one of the arm of the robot malfunction then it will definitely hamper the generation of the plant. So how do you mitigate that part? Because that is a very big part for the SPA power plant owner, because it will directly impact their generation. So how do you mitigate that? Yes, it's a, like, it's a very good uh, concern which you have mentioned, uh, very uh, popular, because uh, we can't afford the downtime of the robots even. Once we have shifted from manual to robotic, and when we are totally dependent on that, and cleaning is day-to-day -day activity. It's not like that we are doing once in quarter or something like that. So downtime is not affordable at all, you are right. So for that, like we are putting our teams in each and every region. Like as of now, we are just serving 300 megawatt. So in each and every region, we are putting our dedicated team so where we can provide the maintenance services for the robots. And we are keeping the spare parts which we feel like which may be uh, like immediate and this may be very, very uh, severe, like uh, which can be damaged. So we are putting spare parts in the plant. Then we are keeping our regional teams uh, nearby to the plant, which can solve the concern within a day. And third thing we are doing this, we are already mon um, monitoring these systems by a web dashboard. Like there are certain parameters we monitor and then we can predict like how we can do the predictive maintenance even. Suppose we are feeling some motor is drawing the overcharge. Although it's running today, but it may get damaged tomorrow or the after. So after the predictive maintenance on the web dashboard, we uh, send our team and we instruct the customers. So uh, downtime is not affordable at all after adopting these technologies. Thank you. Very good information about the robotics part from you, uh, your end. Uh, there, there are new challenges which are coming now in, in the face of the solar, but it's boon for us because we are now entering to the storage also hybrid power plants also. So it will be definitely directly born to the solar power plant, right? So I have a question for you, sir. Like we are going for the storage these days. For the storage, like modal power that is uncontrolled, it is being controlled by the inverter, right? of rectifier and thyristor working behind the scene and make an inverter. Then only it can be used in the same way when you are going for the storage part. In the storage, things are a little bit okay because uh, we have a controlled wave of the hydrogen. We have a controlled wave of uh, uh, redox batteries, you can say, or lithium ion batteries. So uh, how do you think it, it has a challenge in for the inverter, for the inverter part? 
because definitely the interface will be the inverter or some sort of inverter kind of thing, like battery management system kind of thing. Yeah, thank you. So it's like big, big, big concern. So government of India and everybody, everybody for last four or five years, actually tenders are coming, but it's not uh, executed. It's not uh, implemented. Uh, BSS, actually what, what, we, what we are calling it's like energy, uh, battery energy storage system. So in the battery energy storage system, there are two types of solutions. Like one solution is with lead acid, which is, which is uh, like just Baba Adam ke jamane ka, it's a very, very uh, conventional kind of thing. So no problem with the lead acid part. Lead acid might be gel or AGM or LMLA batteries. Now coming back, because lead acid is having is its own limitations. You cannot go beyond say 500 kilowatt hour with a lead acid. It's very, very difficult to design it and uh, take the performance. Again, DOD is again a problem, like 50% DOD, more than 50%, you cannot run that lead acid battery with say uh, 1800 cycles. Uh, now coming to now next technology, which is very popular, which is very common and uh, last to last, or last month or two weeks before, it just got executed uh, with one BSS system by Seki. 500 megawatt versus uh, 1000 megawatt hour of battery that has been already awarded to JSW uh, RE, that company. They, they already awarded at a rate of say 1083 rupees per megawatt per uh, month, megawatt month, like, like that. So now this is the first like big project, more than, uh, more than say 20 megawatt hour of uh, battery. Only one project what uh, is in my uh, notice and I have observed some of the performance by one of the company, I, I'll name that company because that is the very uh, uh, um, uh, reputed and uh, renowned project in India. It's by uh, Mahindra Sustain. I'm not uh, belonging to Mahindra Sustain. I haven't done that engineering for them. Uh, it's say some 18 megawatt hour, 9 megawatt peak of so solar and 18 megawatt hour battery. That is the biggest uh, BSS available right now in India. And after that, it's a two megawatt hour that has been executed in uh, the other dark. So these kind of uh, limitations are available. But now with this breakthrough, 500 by 1000 megawatt hour, probably will be, um, will be seeing a good future. In terms of technology, in terms of technology, uh, now I'm just, uh, I'm just sharing my experience globally. In uh, globally, actually we have done 9.6 megawatt hour with lithium ion. Australia, it's a 100 megawatt hour of uh, uh, storage has already been, with, already been done by Tesla. Um, uh, uh, this with lithium ion, lithium ion LFP technology. Uh, so we have also done and uh, uh, we have designed some thousand plants which are running with lithium ion plus lead acid combination. Uh, uh, 700 overseas, 650 overseas and uh, 275 in India. So this lithium ion is very, very proven kind of technology and uh, it will be the future. Uh, now next level is like vanadium redox battery. So that is uh, again big, big, big challenge. Efficiency of the vanadium redox battery and the cost, like 70% of the efficiency. Again, DOD doesn't matter.